things to God. Now, Lord, we are a praying people. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe in the power of your name. And Father, we're praying right now that you administer in the midst of all these needs. You see those that are hurting in their physical body. We declare you are still the, the, uh, the deliverer. Lord God, you are still the healer. And Father, we're going to pray right now that you administer to those bodies. Lord God, Father, we call out Sister Harmony to you. And Father, we're going to pray right now for healing, uh, uh, for harmony. We're going to pray, that, Lord God, your, your touch on that family, comforting, comforting them and helping them in the midst of this. And those that are trying to recover from surgeries. And Lord, I thank you that you're, you've, you've given us men and women who understand how the body works and how to move. And, and Father, I pray your blessings on them. But Lord, any healing comes from you. And so, Lord, we want to say thank you for it. Lord, we pray for those that are hurting in their mind and their heart. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean you don't feel it. And the Father, I pray right now that you would comfort the heart and mind that feels rejected, feels lonely, feels hurting, feels depressed, feels like nothing matters. Lord, there is still hope in Jesus Christ. Our victory is not something we have to win today. Our victory was won 2,000 years ago on a cross and an empty tomb. And so, Lord, I know right now because of that resurrection, that death, burial, and resurrection, Lord, I have victory over every circumstance. All I got to do is just live through it. So, Father, we lay all of these things at your feet, believing and declaring, Lord God, for your hand to be at move <clears throat> here in our people. Uh, uh, Lord, that you would be in our world because this world, Father, is, the whole world is in upheaval, I believe, because of the the reaction to mankind's sins and their rebellion. And Father, I pray right now that you would protect your people. Help the church to wake up, Lord God, worldwide and to be reaching as many souls as possible because I believe, Lord Jesus, we are in those end times. I believe Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. And Father, I want to I want to win as many people to you as we can. Come on, somebody. I want the dirt. I want the dirt of working in your field under my fingernails when you come to get me, Lord God. And Father, I pray that you would put a burning in our heart to be found faithful, Lord God. Be found faithful. As the Bible says, two women were at work. Two men were at work. One was taken, one was left. Lord God, I want you to find me at work when it's my time to go, when it's our time to go. Lord, we pray right now. I just feel led to do this. Lord God, I pray for open doors, Father, that you would give our church, that you would give our people open doors, Father, so we can make the most difference for you in our communities, in this area. Father, whoever we could touch, I don't think I'm going to touch somebody from around the world, but Lord God, I need to touch somebody around my county. And Father, I pray help us to be that kind of church. And Father, we just thank you for this time. Lord, be in everything that's said and done here today with the <clears throat> children, with the youth, with the adults in here. And Father, across this campus, let the Holy Spirit be moving with revelation about the words of the Bible that you have for us, Lord God, that we can know more about you, we can draw closer to you, and that, Father, we can leave here today and say, I'm glad I went to church, I feel better, and I think I'm going to make it the rest of my week. And Father God, we give you the glory and the thanks and especially for the rain I believe is going to come tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. <clears throat> Be careful, I just might preach tonight. Mm. Make a couple of announcements real quick. We are finishing up our uh, trail ride study that we've been doing on uh, week, number, week number seven. We're going to finish this up, and then I want to follow it up with something, and because uh, it won't it won't take very long. But uh, um, our Maxdale Cowboy Church Christmas is coming up. It's going to be Saturday the 9th and then Sunday the tenth. And we do have a few flyers right here, and uh, we can make some more uh, if somebody want to take one of these and put it up in a in a store somewhere, someplace it can get noticed. We have some flyers down here. You can avail yourself to one and help us get the word, uh, get the word out for that. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Don't forget to. Uh, we got the nominations. Uh, nominations will be good uh, at the box until I believe it's next Wednesday. Lynn's not in here, so I can't ask her. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, trying to see what all stuff was in here. Have you saw the cowgirl Christmas stuff in there? Yeah, hey, that's going to be a good thing, y'all. Yeah. 
and uh, ladies come out for that. There will be a few of us guys that have been <coughs> voluntold into indentured servitude. That's a highfalutin way of saying slavery. <coughs> so uh, uh, pray for those of us that are stuck in this sea of estrogen. Hallelujah. Uh, um, it just felt blessed to say that. Don't forget, we do have our, our quarterly fourth quarter business meeting is going to be um, Sunday the 17th of December. And uh, be sure and be here for that. Have I missed anything? Did I get everything? We all done with that? Yes, sir. Christmas baskets. Oh, 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 oh. I was going to say, I'd, <laughs> just keep feeding me the lines, brother, and I'll just keep t telling for you. Uh, if you know somebody needs a Christmas basket, be sure and see Miss Leslie and, uh, so we can get those baskets to families in need. Yes, ma'am. Game night for December, December is canceled. All right, all right. So, do what? Yeah. So, uh, all right, no, no gambling, <clears throat> no gambling <laughs> in the house of God this coming month. But, but you know, <laughs> little tunica will wind right back up come January. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be ashamed of yourself, lady, making us. It. I, I was like, seriously, you know, because my wife and I, we've right at being here about a year and, and finding out that hey, y'all got this game night thing going on and all this roulette and. And Texas hold them and all that, and and, uh, and I say y'all gamble in this church. She said, "Yeah, but we make sure they tithe on it." So I was like, "Okay." <laughs> and I've been on the losing end of most of it. No, no, but uh, all right. Well, we want to we want to wrap this up, and uh, um, this has been our, our process for helping people become members of the church. And uh, more than just filling out a card, uh, I want you to know who the church is that you're trying to be a part of. Have you know, you just don't walk up to somebody and say, I think I want to marry you. That doesn't work. Bubba, you got no idea how many cats are in that bag she's holding, okay? You got to, you got to, you don't know what kind of jerk is. You, you've heard me say this. Uh, uh, it's my philosophy. All, all men are jerks and all women are insane. You just have to pick the flavor that just, you know, it coincides with your life. So being a church, you, you want to be a part of a church that you identify with, you believe in. Uh, I don't want to be a part of a church that I don't like. And I, I want, if I'm going to be a part of a church, I want to like the church, I want to like the people, I want to like the pastor, and that's not hard to do here. But... Was that a disagreement? Well, well, we'll discuss your membership later. Um, but here's the steps, the, 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 the new steps we're implementing. And uh, I know so a lot of you, your members, you're just going through this to see. But those of you that want to become members, this is a step forward. And so uh, um, to do that, you have to attend. Um, is that number one? No, number two. number two. Yeah, just leave it at number two right there. Uh, uh, to, so to be a member, you faithfully attend all seven classes. And if you missed any of the classes, come see me. We'll help you fill it all out because we, again, it's not just attend some of it. We want you to get the whole enchilada. We want you to know about this this church because as you, those of you, how many have been through here, all seven of them? Let me see some hands. There's a few of you. Okay. So if you've gone through this, you found out who you are, you found out who this church is, and then you found out how you and this church best fit together with your gifts and talents inside this church. Because if this is your church, three things need to happen. You need to be working in this church, because everybody has a job here. You need to be uh, uh, giving to this church because that helps us make the ministries happening. And then some of your best friends need to be inside this church. You need to be making relationships here because it's just better when you like people and you like being here. So that's why I don't want to work at Walmart. 
Yeah, I have two. No more. So you go through all seven classes, then you complete the trail ride. I'm actually on page 20. I think this is in your book. Okay. So you, uh, you complete the trail ride manual, the personal profile, uh, and then we're going to have you sign a form in just a moment, and then you turn that in, and uh, you'll be approved. I mean, there's got to be some really chicanery going on in your lifetime that, that you're not approved. I mean, Mickey's a member. I mean, you know, <laughs> so it just is what it is. But uh, <laughs> we, we, well, hey, they let me be the pastor. So I'm, they set that bar really low at Maxdale Cowboy Church. I'm just saying. But uh, and then what we're going to do is, I believe it's December. Um, is December the tenth a Sunday? Okay, so I believe it's December tenth. We'll actually be uh, bringing in our new members, those of you that have been uh, through this and welcoming you in. And that the conditions of membership: you got to be born again uh, uh, with a, a relationship with Jesus Christ, and uh, and then you accept the the, the membership commitments. So we'll be going over that in just a moment. Now, on page 21, talking about why become a member of Maxdale Cowboy Church. And let me say this right off the bat, because most of you may not know this. So in order to be a church recognized, and you don't have to be recognized by the government, but it is good to be. Uh, there are some benefits that are there. But in order to be what the IRS terms a 501c3 organization, which churches and nonprofits are, in order to have that status, uh, which helps keeps us from certain taxations uh, for now, but you have to have you have to have a, a a president, you have to have a board, and you have to have a voting body. We have to have these things, and uh, there's some churches I don't I, we're not going to do any of that stuff, and that's fine. But but we we kind of go along these guidelines, so this is what we have. That's why we have to have members. Now, becoming a member of this church, you do it because it expresses your commitment and ultimately helps your commitment to God. We are better together. together. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> we are better together. And that's when... Uh, by becoming a member of this church, we're we're harnessed with other people uh, because we want the best for this church. How do you know if you're not invested in some place, it's easy to turn around and walk off? Think about your marriage. This is one of the reasons uh, I push for marriage versus just living together is simply because it's it's there's more of a commitment. It's harder to get out of. My, I was impressed when we lived in the uh, in the state of Arkansas. Um, we, my wife and I would do premarital counseling before we do uh, uh, any wedding. Um, I was a hunter's education instructor, and I, you had to sit through a 10-hour class with me in order to get your hunting license, and yet I'm, I'm signing people's marriage license for nothing, and I even know a marriage license can do more harm than a bad hunting trip. Some of you will get that later. So I thought, man, I'm going to make you go through boot camp. So my wife and I do a premarital boot camp. You can survive it. You deserve to be together. And, uh, but we, what we found out was in Arkansas, they actually have a covenant marriage. You can get a marriage license or you can get a covenant marriage license. And uh, a covenant marriage license, there's a little requirement to it, but to get a divorce through that, you got all kinds of hoops and hurdles. What does that mean? It's built in to make you stay in your relationship. Who knew the government would try to do something to make marriage better? Not me, but... So, being a member here, it, it expresses that commitment. We want to be together. And, and, and by being a member, it's not so quick to run away. Because how you know, every now and then you're going to have trouble. Every family has a little bit of dysfunction in it. Even churches. No churches are perfect. They quit being perfect the moment you walk through the door. We, we are not a perfect church, but we're pretty, we're pretty good there. But even, even churches go through hard times. Even churches go through things. And we are better when we're not fighting together or if it's just, well, I, I just don't like it. I think I'm going to leave. Membership means, man, you know what? I'm kind of pitching my tent right here. I want to be a part of what's going on. And I believe that a setback is just leading to a greater comeback. 
Secondly, becoming a member here allows you to experience Christian unity, prevents you from being a lone ranger Christian. Somebody say the word unity. unity. You can tie two cats by the tail and throw them over a clothesline. You will have togetherness, but you will not have unity. Unity is something that is, is very necessary. My wife and I pastored a church called Unity Assembly of God. How do you think that went? That was the fightingest church I've ever been at in my life. I've, I've come to a conclusion, Mr. Ellis. Do not ever pastor a church with, that has the term unity or happy in its name. Because <laughs> it's not going to be either of them. But uh, uh, becoming a member, because again, we're just, I believe we're better together. Third, uh, being a member here gives you the opportunity to exercise your spiritual gifts. You are an important part of the body of Christ. You have something to offer. Even the teenagers have something to offer. Even the children have something to offer. I remember years, uh, uh, years ago as a high schooler, being in my, our youth group would travel around the country and um, we would perform skits at different churches. We uh, uh, skits, singing. We do a whole service, and uh, uh, and then it was it was it was the eighties. We could get away with a lot of stuff. And so we would actually do for an altar call. We bought a big old spool of red material, and we would they would sing something about the blood and uh, uh, the blood of Jesus, like during the altar call. Oh, the blood of Jesus. And, uh, um, and we would take that and we would pass that material over. And you would be surprised that when that red, talking about the blood of Jesus Christ, that, that covers, that heals, that saves, that replenishes our life, and that cloth would go over and people would just start weeping and crying. I mean, God moving on them. And I remember doing a, uh, uh, where I had to portray Jesus in a skit as a teenager, a rebellious 17-year-old, went on this tour to to have fun with my friends, not so much to represent God. And uh, and I had to portray Jesus, and that was very convicting, all the way down to my socks. And I had to portray Jesus in this one where one by one these students came up and I had to I had to say, Your name is not written in the book of life. Uh depart from me, worker of iniquity. And uh uh and I remember grief coming on me. It, because if I felt like I was condemning my friends to hell, it broke my heart. It really did. And uh, um, God, I know now God was working through that stuff to get to this this boy's heart. And uh, at the end of service, a, a man had come up to the altar to get saved, and there was a ripple went through the crowd. I mean, it, it was just <gasps> all this sort of thing. People turn around, looking, gazing. Come up to the front. He was the 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 town drunk, mean. Nobody liked him. Uh, uh, just just one of the most disre disreputable people in the community. And the pastor stunned. Number one, that he's at church. Number two, he got saved. And it said, and asked him later. So they led him to, to Jesus and asked him why. And he said, the boy that played Jesus had such compassion in his eyes when he had to tell those people to go to hell. Begging them, saying, if you had just done what I said, you could have been in heaven today. He said, if the real Jesus is half as compassionate as what I saw, then I want him in my life. Don't tell me God can't use young people. Don't tell me God can't use you. By being a part of this church, we want you to find, that's the whole reason we put you through the spiritual gifts test and the personality profile. You go through all that stuff. Why? Understand yourself and understand what you need to go into. I, go, I went through all that stuff and I come to find out one thing. Don't work with children. Hallelujah. If I can't meet them, I don't want them. I'm not a good fit for that. There are certain things I'm not a good fit for. And, uh, and the last thing I want you to do is have to do something you don't like, but find some place that you can actually make a difference for the body of Christ. It's not inside these four walls altogether. Sometimes it's something out there in the community. All right, so as a member of Maxwell Cowboy Church, you commit to seven things. Number one, you commit to give up your rights. I want you to see that. 
I'm an American. I got my rights. Let me tell you something. We came to Jesus Christ. We died. This is not about us. It's about Him. And we will have unity as long as we do not have selfishness. Can I get an amen there? Okay. So we, we, we give up our rights. Okay. We want everybody to be heard. We want everybody to, to have a part. But how do you know you're not going to make everybody happy? You can't make everybody happy. What makes you think I can make everybody happy? Well, it ain't going to happen. I already told you, I'm, if I haven't offended you yet, just take a number. I'll get with you just as soon as I can. Number two, if you're a member, you commit to take up your ministry. Go do something. Do, I promise you'll feel better because you did it. Number three, show up to church. There's something about singing standing on the promises while you're standing on the premises. Show up to church. Come on. Uh, lift up. Number four, lift up your brothers. Be an encourager. Be an encourager. How many of you can always complain about something? You can always gripe about something. Find the positive. Find the good. You will have what you celebrate. If what you celebrate is the negative, that's what you're going to get. If you celebrate the positives, that's what you're going to get. Oh, hey, guess what? That works in your family too. Number five, back up your pastor. I was hoping for something a little stronger than that, but okay. Okay. Yeah, well, especially when you disagree with him, James Holverson. If and and I don't I don't say this just because I'm the pastor because I've been an advocate of pastors. I've had to go into when my wife and I were in the assemblies of God. I was in certain positions where I had to go to churches and help help them get out of their muddled messes and have to put down stuff and and uh, there was those moments where I'd, I'd have to go into a church and I'd have to be very real with them. That there's, as long as you are destroying the leadership of your church, you will never have a healthy church. You, you won't. Uh, um, uh, pray for your pastors. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your pastor spouses. Because they deal with a lot of stuff as well. But churches that are blessed, if you see a church rocking and going, take a good look at how they treat their pastors. See a church that's swirling the toilet, Take a good look at how they treat their pastors. I'm telling you, there's a spiritual, there's a spiritual element there. Number six, if you you commit to offer up your tithes, that's not the pastor saying that. That's the word of God saying that. And I preached this the other day. The only people that don't like a tithing sermon is those that don't tithe. Because if you tithe, you know the blessing that comes from it. Blessing follows faithfulness and obedience. Those two things. And by, by offering up your tithe, giving it to the Lord, it not only helps us to have things going on around here, but it blesses you. There's things God puts back into your life. And then number seven, listen up to God. Listen to God. I'm telling you, God wants to talk to you. He does. John chapter 10. My sheep know my voice. The Lord wants to speak to your heart. He wants to share things so that when pastor says something or somebody else comes up here and says something, he doesn't catch you like a hook across the jaw. You say, you know what? God's been dealing with me about that. Coming from a more Pentecostal background that my wife and I were in, you'd have people that would come up and they'd say, God told me to tell this to you. God told me to tell this to you. And I'd have people say, how do I know that it's God and not them? And I said, very easy. Did it align with your spirit or was it like a slap in the face? If God is ever going to use a person to speak to you in that regard, it will align with you because God's already been dealing with you. The Holy Spirit wants to be known. He wants you to see Him. He wants you to hear Him. So, I want you to turn to page right around 40. I'm looking at 42 myself. But I want to. I want us to end. This is the church membership covenant, uh, kind of like filling out a card. But before you put your name on it, I want you to understand what you're agreeing to. And uh, um, so it says this is Appendix M. There's actually two copies of it 
in your book. And uh, uh, it says, The Maxdale Cowboy Church Membership Covenant, having received Christ as my Lord and Savior and having been baptized and being in agreement with MCC's statement, strategy, and structure, I now sense the leading of the Holy Spirit to unite with the church. In doing so, I commit myself to God and the other members to do the following. Number one, I will protect the unity of my church. How? By refusing, uh, excuse me, by acting in love towards other members, by refusing to gossip, and by following the leadership. Now, let me help you with something. People that are very skeptical about leadership, Are probably had a bad encounter with leadership at some point. Listen, if you've never been church hurt, you ain't been in church long enough. If you've never been hurt by a pastor, if you've never been hurt by a board member, I'm, I'm telling you, it happens. It does. My wife and I have got scars. We've got scars from pastors we work for, scars from uh, uh, deacons. Uh, I've got scars from people. That, that just want to attack. Listen, you got to let that stuff go because it's very easy to get all conspiracy minded and say, you know, leadership is this, but you could also say people are that or this group is that and this group is that. You've got to believe God is in control of the church. And I'll tell you how God will not be in control of the church because you're not praying for it. Are you hearing me? You see, if you're letting God have control of that church, God will root stuff out. God has a good habit of doing that. So I'm, I'm pretty particular about this part because I like having a healthy church. How about you? I like having a healthy marriage. I like my wife. I really do. I know I harass her and, and, and some of y'all scolded me for it, but this is, this is how we play. And, but I love my wife. My wife is my best friend. The more I attack her, the more I hurt her, the harder it is to live with her. That's no mystery. Okay. As long as I say, yes, dear, we get along fine. We do great. So I realize the same principles work in my marriage as it does in my church. If I'm seeking for the best in this relationship, the best will happen. But the moment I start nitpicking and looking for the bad and looking for the negative, guess what? I'm going to find it. And I'm going to justify myself into a bad position. Well, we do the same thing in churches. If we're not careful, we will justify ourselves into a bad place and it splits the church. So we, by becoming a member of this church, you're saying, I'm going to protect the unity of my church. And there's a ton of scripture right there to back it up. Number two, I will share the responsibility of my church by praying for its growth, by inviting the young church to attend, and warmly welcoming those who visit. I love this church. And one of the things I love about this church is, and you hear it from people who visit, this is a friendly place. We really like this place. And I don't know if it's a cowboy church or what, but I, this is probably one of the friendliest places we've ever been. Well, most of y'all. <laughs> most of y'all. But I, people come here and they're like, man, I feel it. I sense it. I feel the presence of God here. Uh, uh, people are fun. They're, they're enjoyable to be around. We laugh. We have a good time. If you're a part of this church, pray for it to grow. You want it to grow. You want it to be healthy and do good. You should want the unattend people who don't attend church somewhere. Listen, if they go to church somewhere, quit trying to steal them. I'm not into rebranded cows, okay? Now, if, now, it just so happens that between every church is a fence. And those fences have holes in them. And God calls a sheep. And those sheep sometimes will go through the fence and they'll eat at that barn. And they'll go through the fence and they'll eat at that barn. Here's my goal. Here's my goal, Sister Gail. I want to feed God's people so good at Maxdale Cowboy Church, they're so fat in the spirit they can't fit back through the fence and they're stuck at Maxdale Church. Hallelujah. That's my goal. I want to feed you so good you don't want to go nowhere else. And I'm not just talking about the food. <laughs> I am actually talking about the Bible. But inviting unchurched people here. Then when you see somebody you don't know, man, make them feel welcome. Have you ever been somewhere and they did not make you feel welcome? I've had it. I've had it in different places. And I, I've even felt it in churches when you walk into a church. Uh, um, <laughs> we, were, we were actually 
trying out at a church. Years ago, we were trying out as a church as young, young pastors. And uh, uh, and we had met with them, had dinner with the church people. Wasn't that big of a church, about 20-something people. Had dinner with everybody on, on, on uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning. I preached. Sunday afternoon, we had lunch on the grounds and ready to just kind of meet these people. And uh, we got our food. We went and sat at this table. Everybody else went and sat on the other end of the room. How do you think that made us feel? It was very indicative of the spiritual nature of that church too. Woo! Mm. Pit Viper Assembly God. But you want you warmly welcome people. Make them feel at home. Man, we're so glad you're here. I uh, uh, hug their neck, shake their hand, something. Let them know that that because I tell you, people like to be where they're light. Number three, I will serve the ministry of my church by discovering my gifts, talents, and ministry, by being equipped for and serving in ministry, and by developing a servant's heart. I want to do. I want to help. I want to be a part of something. That I, I love that about this church is people have a heart. And they want to be a part. And it, what, what do you need me to do? Set up a table. Matter of fact, uh, tonight, don't be too quick to leave because we got to change the furniture around here to get, get ready for, for uh, Cowgirl Christmas. So you're welcome. You've been drafted into the, <laughs> to the, the, the masses as well. Have a servant's heart. Man, I'm ready to pitch in. I want to do it. Then number four, I will support the testimony of my church by attending faithfully, by living a godly life, and by giving regularly. Let your light so shine, the Bible says, that people see your good works and glorify who? Well, blessed be my holy name. What a saint I am. And they're so blessed to have me in their assembly. Hallelujah. No, they see your good works, but they glorify God. There is a church in Colleen that has bumper stickers on so many cars driving around town. And they are the worst drivers in the entire community that I just say, Martha, they need to shave them bumper stickers off. They're giving that church a bad name. When I worked at the Sheriff's Department in uh, 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 Stone County, Arkansas, the, uh, we'd, we'd go to different houses, serving subpoenas and stuff like that. And I went with this one detective one time. We showed up at this house, and it had this church's name. They had like a sticker for the church on their front door of their, of their, of their mobile home. And uh, the detective sat there just shaking his head. I was like, what? He said, preacher, anytime we see that church's name on something, you can guarantee there's drugs inside. If you're going to wear Maxdale Cowboy Church stuff, you better behave. Because you're representing Jesus and a whole lot of good people. All right. So here's what I want you to do. If you're already a member of this church, you don't have to, you don't have to do anything. Your material is yours. Uh, if, if you're interested in joining the church, you, you've done the requirements. If you've missed some classes, come see me. We'll get you caught up in everything. But uh, uh, take, take the one that's front and back and uh, print your name, sign it, put the date. You can rip it out and give it to me at the end of church. And uh, uh, so we want to welcome some new members into our church. Now, while you're doing that, let me ask this. Let's get a little personal. Well, my wife and I tried out for this church a year ago, a little, little under a year ago. And I made the comment, I wanted to put this church through a membership class. And I remember I got some groans on that one. Do you see why I want to have a membership class? And membership class is not odd. Many, many, many churches uh, have gone to this, this format because we want you to not just turn in a card so you can get tables and chairs whenever you want. You know, we want you to know what a church member needs to be. And so can you see in this the reason why I would want this so that when people join our church, they know who our church is, but they know who they are, and they can see how they can fit best for the future. Can you see that? I hope you can, uh, uh, because this is, this is something we're going to start. And uh, so it's, you know, people want to join the church uh, about once every uh, three, four months, we'll be doing a class. 
so that people would just have a have a rotating in. But here's what I found. Uh, um, James Dobson, anybody remember James Dobson? Uh, Focus on the family, I believe he was over. James Dobson had put out something in one of his newsletters. It was during the Clinton administration. And uh, during the Clinton administration, the, um, recruiting in the armed forces was way down. Growing up here at Fort Hood, uh, you know, you say military, man, I'm, you caught my attention. And he put this thing, he said, he said that the Army, uh, what was it, the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy all had low recruiting numbers. But for some reason, the Marines did not. And that was when that was when the army came out with uh, the army of one. I remember that <laughs> biggest joke in the world. You're not you're not an individual at all. When you go into the army, they break you down to your piece of machinery. Okay, so they started giving everybody the black beret, uh, which used to be a thing of honor, and then they, well, let's give it to everybody, like a participation trophy. So, <laughs> no, I'm not bitter at all. So the, the, they were trying to do everything they could to lure people in. What can, shiny thing can we give you to make you be a part? And what did the Marines do? And this is what Dr. Dobson pointed out. The Marines said, we're not going to do anything for you. As a matter of fact, we're going to make it harder for you. We're going to make you do more push-ups and more sit-ups and run more miles, and have more weight in your rucksack. We're going to make it harder on you. And by elevating the bar instead of lowering the bar, they never had a problem with their numbers. Sometimes I wonder if in a church, we make it so easy to be a part of it. Are you hearing me? That maybe it's not worth being a part of. But instead you make it a challenge and say, you know what, we want you here but we want you to want to be here. Okay. Any questions about what we've gone through for the last several weeks with the class? Any comments, thoughts? Do you think if somebody went through this class, they would have a good mindset of, oh, this is who our church is, and this is where our church is heading? One of the things you were looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Does that answer questions for you? Very good. Amen. Very good. Yes, sir. A little survey that we've done. I haven't done the second one yet. I'm not sure. I'm going to do that pretty quick. But it helps you kind of identify yourself. Because we do come to church. A lot of times we show up on Sunday week. Yeah. What am I doing today? And make sure what are we doing to be a part of the church. Because your spiritual gift may be something that, if you remember the test we took, your spiritual gift may not be, you know, it's not pastoring. You're welcome. <laughs> you, know, you may not want that one. But, you know, so, so for some people, it's compassion. And you're like, that's a gift? I hate it because I just cry when everything happens. Well, you have a compassionate heart. That compassionate heart says, oh, baby, come here. Let me just hold you. Let me just, you know. I don't have that compassionate heart. I'm like throwing a box of Kleenex at him saying, suck it up. Come on. Here we go. I'm not great at compassion. I'm, I'm really, I am. I'm not. I'm not cold and heartless. Yeah, you know who my mother is. So, but you you have a gift. Maybe it's 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 service. It's hospitality. Man, I like going someplace and they really put out the dog. I mean, they 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 they've done everything nice and make you feel important. And you're like, wow, this is this is pretty good. And then you go some places and you wonder why not even show up. You know. So, yes, sir. I think that, like, the test that we took to find out, you know, um, how we can better fit into the church, it, it can also help you find out 
Yeah, yeah. You can do that to find out where where you stand when you the law. Where you where you stand spiritually, finding out through the test. And I agree with that. Listen, if you find out you take you you go through something and realize, man, I thought I was up here. Ramona, I'm way down here. I didn't listen. It's good to know where you stand because then you know where to go. And and look, we're all on the same journey. We are all on the same journey path. We're just not all at the same mile marker. Okay? And so be patient with people that aren't where you're at because I believe there's people being patient because you're not where they're at. And so this is we're all on this same road. We're just may be in different locations of it. But uh, uh but you're right. Know where you're at and let God keep taking you forward. By this time next year, you ought to be able to say, man, God did this, this, and this in my life. I feel like these things have stepped up in my life. I feel like He's taken these things. You ought to be feeling that on a yearly basis. If you could say in five years, I, I don't know that I've had any growth in my relationship with Jesus Christ, then I'll question your relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm not, I'm not judging and saying you're going to heaven or hell. But I'll, you know, Bible does say to inspect that fruit, don't it? You need to know where you stand. You need to know where you stand. It is not my job as a pastor to tell you where you stand. My job as a pastor is literally I'm a witness. I'm trying to get you to Him. Not to me, to Him. How can I get you to Him? What is it that I can... Uh, 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 assist you in that journey that you're growing closer to God. You're loving God and you're loving His people. You're knowing Him and you're making Him known. So, all right. Well, that's going to conclude it. We're going to pick up uh, pick up something else uh, starting next Wednesday. We've got uh, Christmas time coming up, so there's a lot of Christmas stuff going to be happening at the church. This is one of my favorite times of the year. I'm a child. I love Christmas. I do. I do. My wife could take rocks out of the driveway and wrap them in paper, and I'm excited because I just want to rip paper, Clint. I just want to shred it. I love that stuff. And uh, for those of you that did not see it on Facebook, I do have my stocking hung on my door, and it is ready to receive your gifts. Hallelujah. <laughs> We have one up there too. It's going to have some gifts. Yeah, you're going to have soap and a Bible in your stocking, brother Mike. <laughs> yeah. Jesus sees you. All right, Lord, thank you for this time. Like, can we just take a moment and thank God for our church? The Lord, I'm grateful for my church. I love this place. I love our people. And Lord God, even the even. None of us are perfect and, and, and things aren't perfect and that's okay. I'd still rather be here than anywhere else, Lord. I love this place. But God, I want it to be better. I want our church to be better. I want it to be even healthier. Lord, I, I believe uh, uh, because I'm a family person, Lord, I see empty chairs and all I see is opportunities for our family to grow. And Father, I pray just as it has been for the last year, Lord, keep bringing in new family members to this church. Bring in the people that will cause this place to grow and, and, and that they can find identity, they can find worth, they can find value. Most of all, they can find Jesus Christ. And Father, help us to be one big family, welcoming them in. Help us, Lord God, to be a church that's so healthy. Lord, I don't ask to be the biggest church. That's stupid. Lord, I don't ask to, to set any kind of mile markers. All I ask, Lord God, is let us be so healthy. Let this church be so healthy that, Lord, we could be an inspiration to other churches to be healthy. I believe America is sick because America's churches have been anemic. And that, Father, if the churches are healthy, I believe America can turn around. Come on, somebody. And Father, I thank you for this time we've had together. Lord, I thank you for the members we got. Lord, they're good people. And Father, I pray for those that are going to join this church. And Lord God, let them fall in love with the very church we fell in love with. But above all, Lord Jesus, 
Help us to fall in love with the Savior of this church. And Father, this is your church. And Father, we just want to say thank you for the time we have to be a part of it. And that, Lord, if you tarry in your coming, that, Father, I believe there's going to be future generations that are going to build upon the foundations we have laid, Lord God. And I'm just believing that the next generation will do it even bigger and better than we ever did. And God, I want to give you glory and thanks in Jesus' name. Somebody said amen. Amen. Well, God bless.